uh, today, I'm really honored on behalf of the, my department for Sculpture and Regional Study and uh, Forum for Islam Research uh, to invite uh, Ambassador Professor uh, Ahmed Ahmed. So, Professor Ahmed, uh, it's really, really our pleasure and our honor to meet you here. That this is the fourth project of a series of a quartet of projects. This is the fourth project looking at, in a very broad sense, relations between the West and the world of Islam. So my aim is to travel in Europe and get that snapshot, Europe today, but through the prism of the Muslim experience. Now, it's an impossibility because Europe is a huge continent. It has a huge population. There are diverse communities. So therefore, we have to be selective and hope to hope to put together what is the closest approximation of an impression. This is what we are achieving or aiming to achieve. <clears throat> so we have traveled from the north. We've been up to Edinburgh, Belfast, right up in the north of Europe and down south to Melia. Melia is part of Spain, but situated in North Africa. It's still Spanish territory. From the west, Cordoba, right up to the east, Zanti, Zanti is a town in North Greece on the border of Turkey and Greece, populated by the old Ottoman community. And we could very easily divide the Muslim community into three distinct categories. And this is important because in Europe, we traditionally see the Muslims as a monolith. And Muslims themselves, interestingly enough, see themselves as Pakistanis or Turks or within Pakistanis as Punjabis and Pathans or Shia or Sunni. But in fact, sociologically, you can divide them into three distinct categories. The indigenous Muslims, Muslims who are European, who are from here, from the soil, sons of the soil, like the Muslims in the Balkans, they've always been there. Secondly, the immigrants, those who come from the Middle East, from South Asia, and thirdly, the converts. So the, all three of them are Muslim, but quite distinct in terms of society, in terms of their thinking, and what they bring to Islam. Now, I maintain that this is such a vital continent, Europe, for the world, and that for the last half millennium, this continent has dominated the world. For better or for worse, this continent has dominated the world in every way, politically, economically, socially. And therefore, we need to look at it very closely. And we, especially from the Muslim world, need to look at it even more closely. And what Europe can teach us is to look beyond this half millennium, beyond colonization, beyond this period of history, going back to a thousand years ago, and maybe look at Spain and look at Andalusia and look, look at a time when these world religions could live together and live under the rubric of La Convivencia. It's a term which means coexistence. It was a time in Spain, Andalusia, when Jews and Christians and Muslims, for a certain period of time, lived together. A certain period of time. They lived together, they created art, architecture, philosophy, mathematics, astronomy. And it was an unbelievable time when you look at the world today, the 21st century, where every day you switch on your television, there's murder and violence and so-and-so's killing so-and-so, so-and-so's beheading so-and-so, and so-and-so's -and -so blaming so-and-so. It was a time when the Muslim ruler had a prime minister who was Jewish, a foreign minister who was a Catholic bishop. And that was the norm. And then in reverse, in Sicily, you had a Christian king with a Muslim and Jewish population who treated his Muslim population in the same way, with tolerance, with acceptance, and with generosity. So I just wanted to introduce some ideas of the project. Uh, you've seen a bit of the video.
and then really um, request you to ask any questions, make any comments, or offer suggestions. But before I do, I have uh, Dr. Amne Hoti, who, who's joining us from Pakistan. Um, it's great to be here at your wonderful campus, sure. your uh, very um, lovely country. Uh, I know you have lots of challenges, so we're hoping that through scholarship, there will be a sense of understanding of the other and respect of the other. We hope that we we'll all reach out to each other and really begin to understand each other in a, in a way that we want to be understood ourselves. And uh, at least there were some signs. Mm. And uh, you can see that the, the process of so-called integration is in place. And uh, uh, I gave you some of the examples. And uh, you can see some of uh, the people that I mentioned to you yesterday are in the hall. In the hall, yes. <clears throat> there is a trend uh, that uh, religion in general, not only Islam, but the religion is, is bad. The religion creates uh, wars and, and fights and uh, hatred. And uh, unfortunately, in some cases, they are right. Mm -hmm. But we have to, to fight that impression and to tell the world that peace in the world will come through religion, not through politicians. I, I just want to finish by saying that I very much appreciate your efforts. I think it is so important. It, uh, we need much more of that. And uh, that uh, should go out to, to the public. I don't know whether you, during your stay here, will have a chance to speak to the press. Uh, so uh, so I, I appreciate the effort of you and of your daughter uh, and, uh, and uh, wish you success in every way. One of the most inspiring phrases that I learned from uh, your colleague, uh, Lord Jonathan Sachs, who is a very dear friend, I told you both of my daughter and my wife and myself, is Tikkun Olam to go out and heal a fractured world. And I really think all of us, Muslims, Christians, Hindus, atheists, socialists, must keep that as a motto for the 21st century.